my job as a contractor is to put together and package everything so it makes their job and life easier so that way I can get your roof done at the dollar amount in order to restore you to pre-storm condition. I said, but I'm not going to argue it. The public adjuster, that's their job. That's what they do. And I, so I have relationships with PAs, different firms to help, you know, the, the homeowner. And it really makes my job a lot smoother and easier. You know, I don't even need a bill collection department. You know, 45 days later, I get a check for my supplement and the roof's already torn off and installed. So it's just cost incurred. So they're arguing a cost incurred estimate. And it's not even an estimate anymore. It's a cost incurred invoice. So if it goes to appraisal, like we talked about, or another PA and I had a conversation about, they're talking about what it costs to do the job. In my contract, it says, um, you know, this is the initial contract price, which is given to you by the insurance uh, company. Uh, this is their estimate. And that's exactly what it is. Um, there, this is the initial contract price plus pending supplements. And then in my contract, it mentions we do things to exact domain pricing. Supplements are agreed upon between, you know, the contractor and the insurance company. Uh, and those are in addition to your initial contract price. So when the insurance company pushes back and I send them a, you know, a signature of my, um, like the public adjuster will send in the estimate I'll, and he sends it to the insured. I have the insured sign it. I sign it and then that becomes part of my contract and I send it to the insurance company. I send it back to the PA, PA sends it in. So they have a signed estimate, a signed contract ready to go. I rip it off, put it on. And then it's a invoice. It's no longer an estimate. So it makes a big difference. And it really, the public just really needs to know that, that they have a contractor who understands how that, that they understand how it works. I mean, they, the contractor understands the PA's position and, and how to get stuff done and how to get it approved. And they know that the work's actually going to get done. So there's less liability for the PA. And then the expert reports really help work into that. You know, you know one thing we were talking about yesterday also was, you know, I think a lot of times some public adjusters and contractors out there, they frown upon people like you and I working. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't understand it. So you know, I don't either. Yeah. Florida is a unique animal, man. Or, yeah, because that's very common throughout the country, right? Yeah. So, very I common. Think, so public adjusters, it's super beneficial to have a guy like Jared on your claim because he's already, you've got your expert documentation. Good to go. Like that's yeah, like, I'm u what? unique in that way. Unique in that way. I'll, I'll have an independent third party go out and do an inspection on the roof. And it's called a home inspector. Um, so I, I have a partnership with a company, they hire local people. So it's, you know, they, they have, they don't know anything about my business. So it's 100% the independent third party. Let me, let me interrupt you real quick. Uh, I'm always telling public adjusters to get a roofer out there, get a roofing expert for your expert re report on a roof, get your plumbing expert out for the expert plumbing report. But what you sort of, uh, uh, you just, you hit a light bulb for me, uh, when we first met was guys, you can get a, a home inspector also because home inspectors yeah. are also educated and, and, and licensed obviously on roof, For roof inspections. Right. Yeah. So why not, if you can't find that roofer with the roofing, uh, with the roofing uh, license number, you could go get a home inspector to go up there and take a look at it. That could be just as valuable as a roofing inspection from a roofer. Uh, it could be just as valuable. Well, and then, you know, in your guys' uh, arguments to the insurance company, you know, let's say they push back, which they always do. They always push back. We know this is going to happen. So uh, the insurance company pushes back on the, the home inspector's um, qualifications or something. Well, you send in their license. Their license is they are licensed and certified to do tile, metal, shingle, right. roof inspections Even better. For, dam for damage. So, okay. Then they come out and say, the roof has damage on it. You need a licensed roofing contractor to put together something. So if you just submit the home, the, uh, home inspector's report, they're going to say, well, you need a licensed roofer. Okay. So then you have your licensed roofer put together their expert uh, report and send it in. Then how's the insurance company really going to deny that they told you what to do. And then you have two things to fall back on. Um, the roofer give it to you for free. The, the, uh, the home inspector will charge you obviously. Um, so what I did is I just networked with home inspectors to put them on there immediately. Um, I passed the cost on, uh, but you know, I explain to the homeowner why it's important. And not only that, but they do a pre, so think about that as public adjusters, as a service that I would offer to anybody that's listening. If you worked with me, um, I would have a pre home inspection done before the roof is done. And then what I do is I use that as kind of a, 
on the back end, I will bring that home inspector back out. And my company will pay for it because that's my CYOA. When I walk away from that job, that homeowner then has a roof and home report, knowing exactly at a point in time, date, timestamps, geo-targeted on the pictures. They know exactly what that roof looked like, which is a database that's created slowly, obviously, for claims, but hugely important because then anybody that would work with me, I have a whole list of people that when a hurricane hits again, I've got everybody and with, a, with a report. So if nobody ever gets on that roof and he gets damage on it, well, then what caused it? So it will make the next claim a lot easier. And so I started doing that in, in uh, Naples and Fort Myers and um, doing it, did it in Panama City and doing it here in Pensacola. So slowly building a database that is easily accessible. And so that name cop pops up <clears throat> or a public adjuster said, hey, you don't have a report on this, do you? And of course I would. That obviously would have a fee. So. You get the home inspector to do a, a report before or you get the home inspector as soon as the damage occurs and you go out there, you get a home inspection report. And then after the yep. claim is done, after you replace the roof, after it's all said and done, you get a post inspection report. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a, great too, so because that's going to help the homeowner know that at least the job was done right too, because exactly. that, that's the other thing too. And I, pa and I package that together with a certificate of completion report that I do. And that part of that report is the home inspection report, um, the passing of final inspection so that they have that for the roof. And then the same thing for the interior, because I have to submit that in order to get the recoverable depreciation released and proof of deposit for or proof of de uh, deductible payment. So that way that also helps the home inspector know that like, okay, I'm getting all this approved. There's not going to be any shenanigans going on because this guy's a GC and a roofer and he wants his ONP. So he has to do the inside work and the outside work. Otherwise it's fraud. So that's why I do it to make sure that the homeowner has a little peace of mind. And also as a company, you know, I know exactly what that thing looked like. Everything functioned when I left. That's the biggest thing. I think it's good. It's a great service that you're providing to the, to the policyholder as well. 